Welcome back to the Camino Cafe. I'm so happy to have you here each week. And this week we have a great show planned. I just wanna remind everyone that uh, I would love for you to join our private Facebook group. I only say private because you know that's what Facebook calls it and it's a way for us to have a group. So it is the Camino Cafe podcast group, right? So I have a page, but also there is a group and I would love for you to join it because we are gonna be doing some Facebook lives uh, with authors that I've been interviewing and with pilgrims and, and who knows now that I'm in Robin all, who knows what could happen. Uh, so please join that group. And I'm really thrilled today to have Andy Holloway here with me. And Andy reached out to me a couple of weeks ago, having no idea that I knew who he was, even though we both are from the Seattle area and lived on kind of close islands right off of Seattle. Um, he reached out to me. I had heard about him through Dan Mullins and he reached out to me. And of course, I love talking about the Camino, but what really, really stood out to me is what he's got planned very soon. Uh, and that is to walk with his daughter, Lily, who is getting ready to um, be in the eighth grade or is currently in eighth grade. Is she currently, Andy? Is she currently in eighth yeah, grade? Sorry, sorry to interrupt. Oh, sorry, yeah, sorry. She's, oh, no, no. she's a kid. Yeah, so this is Andy. So welcome, Andy. Thank you for coming to the Camino Cafe to chat. Thanks for having me. Yeah, so Andy and Lily are going to be walking by my house very soon, and so we have decided that we are going to do kind of a series of interviews with Andy and Lily. Lily will be joining us near the end of this interview because I first want to talk to Andy about his past Caminos, um, so this isn't his first one, and so, and then we'll bring Lily so you can meet her, and then we're going to all get together in Robin Alto Camino, and then uh, we're going to talk to him again after they get home, or maybe in Santiago. I don't know. We haven't decided. Who knows? Uh, so, uh, Andy, I, I guess just start with um, so many places we're going to go in this interview, but I, I think the first place I want to start is now that you've walked before, and you're, you have two daughters, Lily and Hannah, and you mentioned that you had promised them that when they reached eighth grade, that this would be something that you would do with them. So I wonder if you could just share with all of us, what prompted you to come up with this idea? Why did you make the offer? Well, first, what a great experience, right? And um, for to be, I mean, I feel like I'm the lucky one to be able to share the, the time with them because um, that's quality time that I, haven't had with them necessarily. And this is something that I'm so passionate about. Um, and that's been so helpful to me in my life that it just seemed like this is the perfect, this is what an education, you know, what a, what an education to a different way of looking at uh, from their normal day-to-day -day life, I guess. Um, and I, I wish that I had had it younger, you know, mm -hmm. and so why not, why not take them? That seems like a, a natural thing to do. Um, and Lily, Lily really grabbed onto it. Like Hannah is kind of, yeah, that seems like a really long way to go. You know, she's not sure she really wants to do it, but you know, it'll come or it won't, you know. But, um, but Lily, on the other hand, um, is she just was excited about it. You know, she, you know, I, I, I we, got, we got some gear and we had planned to do it. Oh, actually, but right, right when COVID hit, um, we were we were talking about going because she was currently at, at the time she was going to a school that um, it was an IB it was an IB school, International Baccalaureate School, so it was really set up for this type of thing. So we were building kind of our own curriculum to mm -hmm. to do it. Um, and now that we're back overseas um, here in Germany, things are, are are a little more structured. So we. When we brought it up to the teachers, they were like, hmm, you want to do what? You know, you want to pull it out of school for how long? This doesn't work, you know, like, and they said, well, you have to do it in eighth grade. You have to do it before high school because high school will be challenging, you know, mm -hmm. then. And so this is when we are doing it. And it's, why not? It's a perfect time. Cool. So, so now you guys uh, live on Whidbey Island, but you are in Germany right now. And how long have you been there? And how long do you think you'll be staying this time? So, you know, We'll we'll we're we'll staying until Hannah's done with with high school. So at the, at at the at the very least. So that'll be um, eight more years. Eight uh, years. So, so Maggie, my wife, is a uh, a teacher. She teaches on a U.S. military installation here. She teaches elementary art. 
Okay. Um, and so that's, and we, we've been really doing that for the better part of our kid's life. We were in Japan for seven years and then we were in a different part of Germany and we just kind of decided, oh, it's time to move home. And then decided like, oh, we made a mistake, you know? <laughs> so we, um, so it took us three years. We were on Whidbey for three years. And, okay. uh, and, uh, and that's when that was it. Actually, I was on my first Camino in 2017 when Maggie got her job on Whidbey. So I had to, I had to leave. I, I had made it to Burgos and, um, and I had planned on going all the way, but you know, at that point we had to get ready to move. So, um, so I, I knew that I was going to go finish it. And I did in May of 2019. Okay. So what year was, what year was it that you? I uh, walked San Juan Peter Port to, uh, to uh, Burgos in 2017. Um, ironically, I started, I started training. I started, I started training for the Camino the day that Dan posted, hey guys, I'm new, I've got a podcast, like to podcast one. So like wow. I, I was listening to these podcasts, walking in the, the, the trees, just going, man, this is going to be fun. And, um, and it was, it was a blast. Different from what I thought, but a blast. Okay, so I, I'm sorry I mispronounced uh, Hannah's name. I thought it was oh, it's Hannah. okay. Sorry about that. Yeah. <laughs> Japanese um, for flat. And now has Maggie walked the Camino with you? No, she hasn't. So okay. I, she wants to. She will, I think. Um, but she has a structured job, and my job allows me to be anywhere. So, and it, it's a natural fit for me and it's more challenging for her yeah totally makes sense so um we've kind of been emailing back and forth and and whatnot and you have shared with me that part of what prompted you to want to walk was kind of a life change you were dealing with a lot of anxiousness in your life and um just felt that this was something that you needed to do so I wonder if you can take us back to that time frame when you first heard about the Camino and when you were kind of recognizing that, hey, something, something maybe needs to change about me or about my life, and maybe it starts with the Camino, I don't know, take, take us back there. Well, I, I found the Camino, so I was a stay-at-home dad in Japan, um, and uh, I would put the kiddos down for naps, and I just... I just love researching. So I just started looking at the world's pilgrimages and the, the Francais just seemed like the, the natural first step. I knew I loved walking. I knew I, I loved adventure and I wanted to walk across the country because that sounds really fun, you know? Um, and honestly, for me, a lot of my my life abroad is I'm at home. And I mean, now we've got a dog, but it's lonely. And I'm, I'm, I'm a people person. So, um, and it's also really, really lonely to be a stay-at-home dad in Japan. You know, working the, the most of the military dads, military people are dads at sea, you know? So, and, and in my neighborhood, I was looked at like I had three heads, truly. Like, I'd be pushing my, I'd be pushing Lily on the swing next to somebody else pushing their girl on a swing. And they would look at me like, what are you doing? Why aren't you at work, you know? Um, I said, well, I'm doing the exact same thing you're doing. Doing, you know and she's like this would not happen in Japan like it was just such a foreign concept well you know I look back and I go that of course I, uh, yeah that, that was kind of the beginning of anxiety you know I felt like I needed to be doing more but I don't really know why I needed, felt like I needed to do more right I was doing exactly what so many people have done all like we what a luxury to have a parent home you know right. um so it was, it was during the, so, you know, going back to the Camino, it was during those naps that I found it and it, it, it planted a seed and, uh, and it, it, it took, it took a while to happen. Honestly, I, we decided I was going to do it in 2017. And at the time I didn't realize that I had been, I, I had yet been diagnosed with Graves disease. Um, uh, but I was oofta, like I was unable to sit still. And so Graves' disease is, is an autoimmune disease, 
really typically hits women more than men and older women. Um, so I was, I was kind of an outlier there, but um, it, it's, uh, it messes with your thyroid. So it, uh, so it makes sure it speeds you up. It speeds your metabolism up to a, a rate that's just almost untenable. Um, so again, like I think all my life I've had anxiety, but I've also had this graves and we don't know for how long and the two really mirror each other. So it's, so it's, uh, so I, I, on in 2017, I just walked because I just needed to walk. You know, I had to, I had to go. Um, 2019 was such a beautiful thing. And I had these exciting plans to take photos and document it and all. And then I got to the Camino and I got to, to I mean, almost day two, I realized, because at that point I had been medicated, that I realized what I had um, and my metabolism, you know, I was able to bring my, 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 my numbers down into like normal person range again and I felt so good and, I, and it was just like I had no idea how long I had been dealing with this but I felt so comfortable and there was there was such a beauty to that when I was walking because you know here I had plans and then I realized no I don't need any plans my plan is to walk and to meet people and to have conversations and so it was it was it was a really it was a, it was a change from what I expected to do and and it was such a beautiful luxury to not be have this chaperone of jitters, you know. Um, so chaperone of jitters, I love that terminology. How did and if we can go back, you know how yeah. how did the anxiousness show up in your life? You know how did it manifest in a way that you know you felt like you had to have a change. Um, well, the, with 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 graves specifically, there's there's a there's an element where you get um, you know when you I just I kind of liken it to when I, when people I just don't ha I I used to I say this a lot um, sometimes I just don't have enough room like I don't have I would tell Maggie I just don't have I don't have the room to 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 put the energy into this like I was I was so at the top of I, I was so at the top of what I could handle that I would just kind of stand in a room with in a fog you know like mm -hmm. I I've always had you know a pretty active mind um mm -hmm. and so you know I think that I've I've I my temperature always ran a little spazzy even when I was a kid you know um but it was starting to really affect my relationships. It was affecting me as a dad, really, you know, because because I just had such an aversion to noise, um, and I and so it would it would make me irritable. And I'm not genuinely an I'm not gen, generally an irritable person, you know. But I just I just was noticing uh, I was I was I was noticing myself becoming somebody I did not want to be. And I, I certainly didn't want to be to them and to my partner, you know, um, not that I was aggressive or ye I yell or, but I just didn't have the, I just didn't have the space to be patient. And honestly, that was like when I, it was, it was challenging the first time I left because my kiddos didn't really know where I was going. Um, and I just, I, I, I took two rocks, you know, and to, for, for Cruz de Ferro. And I just, I actually, I had took them out on the beach and said, look, choose, choose a rock. Um, mm -hmm. And they chose a rock. And I just said, look, this is, this is for, this is, this is for patience. I'm walking the Camino to be more patient for you, you know? Um, and so that was my, my, that was, that was it. And how old were I, the girls at this time? Well, they're, they're what, 13 and 11 now. So 2019, um, this is uh, radio math or video math. It's not so, not so easy. Um, I would say they were somewhere around, um, what, you tell me. Um, it's four, so it was four years ago, um, three four years ago. Five. Yeah, yeah. yeah. eight and 11 or. Okay, so they. No, I was 2017 when I initially went um they were even younger I don't know they were they were young um 
Take the them out to the beach to pick out a rock, a stone that you're going to carry. Is that is that what you said? That was that was it. It was the it was the stone that I was going to carry with me. And, and um, you told them why that you were carrying it for patience, or just that you were yeah. carrying. I told, that told carry. Them, I told them. I mean, it was teary. Like it was really hard because you know I want. I love them, you know, and here I, I I didn't feel like I was who they needed me to be, but I wasn't who I needed me to be, you know, so like it's this weird juxtaposition. It's a it's a tug of war that, you know, of of selfishness to tr to take care of yourself, but also be selfless and be a parent. And I was struggling with the second part because I hadn't really, I didn't feel comfortable with the first part. And right. so, you know, uh, and I mean, it's an everyday, it's an everyday battle. And I think a lot of parents feel the weight of that, you know, just like I'm not giving them what, what, what they should, but just what, what I feel they need. So well, let's talk a little bit about this. Um, and first off, I, I wanted to say, I'm sorry about the diagnosis. It, it sounds like through knowing it though, that you've been able to manage it with medication and with walking. I have, and oddly, I, I've, you know, in a, in, in a certain number of, um, there's a certain percentage of people who, who get it that, um, that will go into a state of remission. And so now I am off medication um, and my numbers have been, my, my numbers are staying level. Now, I, I think the majority of time it comes back, um, but for now I'm loving it, you know? Um, and it's also like, I, it's also helped me realize that I actually do suffer from some anxiety because those jitters are, are there. And whereas I thought that they were, they were my thyroid, um, they weren't, they were just there. So now at least, okay, well, I know my numbers are good. Now I have to work on tackling um, just the everyday jitters and stress and that kind of stuff. And um, would yeah. you say, would you say that, um, you know, I think we all feel pretty anxious when we, when this seed is planted, we know that we need to walk the Camino, that we're going to do it. And, you know, you can tell by all the Facebook forums and different things with all the questions about planning yeah. and, and, and you probably observing Lily right now and her planning. Um, do you feel like you had more anxiousness about walking or were you just so certain you needed to do this that your anxiousness really wasn't a part of the planning or, or getting to Spain? You know, for somebody who's anxious normally, this, this, I love to research. So for me, I, I, I just love diving into that rabbit hole, you know, of stories. And it was very clear to me that this was something that I needed or I would, I, I wanted to do, you know? Um, so to answer your question, I, oddly people, well, Maggie calls me Camino Andy when I come home because I'm so relaxed. Um, and yeah, people, yeah. On, yeah the, uh, when I'm on the Camino, people, I, I hear people all the time just going, you were so positive. You were so, you know, like you really set me at ease when, you know, whatever it is, when they were working, like I took a bus today and I feel really bad about it. And I'm like, wow, this is, that's what you needed. You know, like I'm a very, very, I'm very calm on the Camino. Um, mm -hmm. And, and you hear all the time people say, you know, the Camino begins when you get home. And I think that if I can continue to take little chunks off of the Camino and, and, and put them into to, to my life here, that it can only help, you know. Um, yeah. So in 2017, you set off from St. John. Yeah. And how um, long did it take you to get to Burgos? How many days would you say? I think, I think it took me 10 days-ish. Um, maybe nine, you know, and, and I love that section of the Camino. Me too. I love it. I live in, I, from, I, from the albergue in Grañon to, I, I, you know, I, I just loved it. I, I, first off, I mean, you know, the, there's something about the excitement that you have that first day. And I mean, obviously you're ridiculously sore when you're you know, just watching people when they get out of bed that first morning is, is, uh, is wonderful. Um, Cause you're just, they just hobble, you know, you're just, you just, there's no way, unless you live in the Rockies or, you know, in the Alps, there's just, it's so challenging to train for 26 kilometers up, you know, especially, <laughs> that first eight kilometers from Saint-Jean-Pied-de-Port it's just steep you know 
Um, so uh, no, like, but but it was it was so clear even from day one, from even walking out, like, oh, this is this is where this is where I need to be, because the the people that you meet are so open, you know. And I think if I learn one thing about the, uh, one, I take one thing home, and have implemented it is just I I want to be that open. You know, like I don't need to live a, a guarded life. I I just don't. Like I, there's something just so lovely about being able to stumble across uh, uh, somebody and listen and have them pour their, their heart out to you. And you're like, this is amazing. You know, like, holy cow, some of the stories you hear from people are heart-wrenching, just heart-wrenching stories. I... I can't imagine them talking to their friends about that at home, but I'm safe. You know, you're safe and you're engaged and you're listening and you have the time and you're, it keeps the focus off of whatever's bothering you, you know, as far as like your feet or the, you know, your, the heavy pack or whatever it is, you know? So it, I, there's just, it's, it's, that's the, the beauty of the Camino and it just, it just introduces itself to you immediately. Yeah. So when you get to Burgos, um, so you've walked 10 days and, uh, you know, how, how, you know, before you knew you were going to have to go home, like, so when did you find out when you actually got to Burgos that you were going to have to go back home? No, it, was the, it, it was the day before. And we had, we had found out about three days prior to me, um, leaving that there was a position available so we had had those conversations that you know go home stay in dodia um, stay in the you know department of defense education um and uh you know, with parents that are aging and with, with this mag, this Maggie, you know, landed an art position um, there on the island. You know, we thought it was okay. This is the perfect, the perfect time to do it, you know. Um, and, uh, and so we were just kind of, you know, Maggie's, Maggie's Maggie, she's wonderful. So, you know, I knew she was going to get the job. So I, in my head, I kind of like was prepared to, to come, come off of the Camino. And we found out the day before that she got it, uh, day before Burgos that she actually was offered a position, so. Okay, and so then once you were in Burgos, you, you knew that it was time to, to stop this Camino and, and head home and help out. Yeah, because so much of my job, you know, so much of my job, uh, you know, here in, in, in this lifestyle that we, that we are living um, is the person who I get things done, right? So when they're when when you have to have people come and pack you out, Maggie still has to teach, you know. So I, this was my this is my job. I had to go home and prepare the house. I wonder if you can kind of address because I you know I talk to a lot of parents who have young children still, mm -hmm. and they talk about the difficulty of getting away from their family to walk, you know, because if you're going to walk the full Frances route, you're looking at 33 days at the least, maybe 40. Um, yeah. Maybe more by the time you add arrival and departure. So I wonder if you could kind of speak to the power of the Camino in just a condensed version, you know, because you did 10 days and you had a lot of things that happened for you and, and some transformation occurred. So I wonder if you kind of speak to folks about that, you know, it's okay if you come, <laughs> come even right. if you can't do that full route. Um, yeah. You agree with that? I, I don't know. So maybe kind of if you could kind of just talk about that experience and, and how. Yeah, it was, phase it was impacted. I mean, honestly, it was a, it was challenging um, to do it in sections because because honestly, for me personally, it takes me it takes me 10 days any time I go on vacation really to to unwind to a place where I'm comfortable, you know? Um, so in the Camino, it was a faster, it was a faster transition to that, but uh, I don't, I mean, yes, if you, if you, if it's do sections or nothing, man, come and do sections, right? Like that's, there's no, again, this is your, this is your Camino. But for me, Personally, it was a challenge to do it in, a, in such a small section. Um, yeah, this not, like, what's the challenge in that? Let people kind of, let's hear the, the challenge of doing it in sections. Because that's, for folks in Europe, yeah. that's what we do. You know, they don't, they don't necessarily come and do the whole thing, right? They, they're coming and doing a couple of weeks, uh, maybe a boy, year. Boy, you know, I, I just, I just, 
Yeah, sorry to interrupt. I just got done walking from Le Puy en Belay to, uh, uh, to Ross Espias. Um, and uh, that was the biggest struggle for me is, the, is first off, there really were very few people other than French people and they were all walking in sections. So for, for like the beauty of that Camino is, it is spectacular. And the food, good golly. Um, the sure. food is so, <laughs> the cheese you know, are so nice and the food um, is amazing. But, but dinners, because, because you're having five course meals for pilgrim meals, um, dinners are long and, and I don't speak French. And so like it was an exercise of, I was, I was, I was reading, I spent the 30 days reading faces, you know, and look, that was, that had its own beauty and I wouldn't have traded it. But when I, I actually ended this Camino in, um, in Roncesvalles because I wanted to, I wanted to walk that 26 kilometers with strong legs, you know, because I hadn't yet. Um, and I, I really, really wow did I love my favorite day was that last day because I I got to talk to people again you know um and so to answer your question about um about sections and for me um and for what I've witnessed in people especially on that La Puy route when they do it in sections is that I people have a hard time they were always thinking about the end yes so you know and and I, I think there's a there's a luxury in being able to just go. Oh yeah, no, this is a, this is thirty days. You know, um, I don't need to think about the end until the end. But they were always they you know they just started, and then they were like, okay, well I have to get on this bus and I have to plan this, and because I'm going to be in Conk and that's a tough place to get to, or from Conk to wherever. You know, it just. I saw their wheels turning about something that was other than what they were experiencing. And that, I mean, I can't say that made me sad because it was their Camino, right? But it, it was, I just, I just think there's a, there's, a, there's a beauty in being able to completely let go of all of the stuff that you've left at home, you know, that you leave at home. Uh, you know, my dream Camino is no deadlines, no dates around it, right? You just start walking and walk until you just don't want to walk yeah. anymore, right? Well, that to me, that to me like, would be the ideal. And, and you're right, I did walk with a lot of Europeans this last time and you know they were maybe walking a weekend or they were walking uh, a week. Um, so it was different because you know it's kind of like when you're getting close to Santiago, you know it's almost done and, and, and there's a difference. So yeah, I'm sorry, were you gonna add something to that? No, 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 no. It's, it, it, no, I don't, I don't know. I lost my train of thought. Um, but it's, um, oh, I was going to say, yeah, much like that, that, that the wonderful uh, podcast you did uh, a couple of, a couple ago, you know, the woman who's walking all the way to, uh, to Israel. I mean, yeah. to Jerusalem. Um, whoa, like that just, that is amazing. Mm -hmm. And amazing, right? Uh, Oh man, I'm gonna follow this journey. I'm gonna follow her because it's um, what an what an amazingly engaging young woman, and I just then and and that's bold. I mean, bold. to me, that's bold. Yeah, she's um, taking a year off of her life um, when she, her career is is really starting to take off, and she has right. to take a break, which is great. Her work has allowed her to do that, and she's right. taking. Year so yeah so folks if you haven't checked out that episode that's with Carver. yeah please do yeah <laughs> um, and we're we're going to be doing another follow up with her very soon so um, well let's talk about um, so now you guys get settled back in Whidbey and you somehow decide now that you're going to come back to Spain and do what so did you go back to Burgos and start or so take no. us back to that next Camino no so um, I. Uh... It came about pretty quickly. Um, so my cousin, um, who's a doc, uh, so so my dad, my dad was a tall man. He was six yeah. six, and who who just had he just his cholesterol and stuff like that was really 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 tough. So he had to like get, so I have that on, on my side as well. And so my 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 doctor cousin is always watching my blood work, and he sent me a message one Saturday morning. I think this was in February. Um, that just said, look, I got your I got your numbers, and I'm not I don't love them. 
you know, and um, he, he, he just says, you really do have to, 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 to change things. You have to, you know, drop, drop some, drop some, drop some weight and, and, you know, all of, all of the things that you do, change your diet. Um, and it, it, it's funny, Maggie read that email and turned to me and she said, buy plane tickets to, to, to walk the Camino. Oh. Um, and I'm like, well, it's, you know, cold <laughs> and it's really wet, uh, you know, and she said, I don't care, you know, put on that coat. Um, so, so literally it was three weeks and, you know, my shoes were still smelling of Amazon and not broken in. And Wait, I, no, when, this is in 2019. This was in 2019. So, okay. um, so like quite literally, I was on a plane three weeks later, like it was. And so it wasn't a planned Camino, uh, okay, but so you know, what month is this? this was March early. So I started, I started March, I want to say March 2nd, I think 2019. And it just so happened that that was the driest March in recorded history. Um, <laughs> I, had, I had four days of drizzle. I mean, no, excuse me. You're blessed. I had I had four hours of drizzle, so I had some drizzle leaving Pamplona, and then nothing but like amazing sun. Um, and so where and did you start in? When when so did you I started start? In, uh, I started in Saint Jean. Uh, Saint Jean people. Started in Saint Jean, so you went back to the original starting point. Of course, yeah, yeah, yeah. I had to. I just really wanted. I wanted that community, that that full feeling of walking across the country, you know, um, and. Uh, and it was again. It was, it was magical, but in its own way. Now, did you have to do the Napoleon route, or did you have to do I the? Did. Okay. No, excuse me. Excuse me. I did the the, the non-Napoleon route. They would no, 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 That's completely the Van Carlos. Yeah. Carlos so. Route. So yeah. did you yeah. start then from Saint John and walk over to Van Carlo and then around and up, or what did you do? Yeah, and that um, yeah, because the I want to what, what's the the date is it April first that they opened the Napoleon route, um, and the, you know there's some there's some stories of people really getting in trouble and they should you really shouldn't try to tackle the Napoleon route even if the weather says it's going to be good man that is a it gets you get fierce up on the on that pass you know so so no I I walked the the alternate route and was happy to do so you know um, this time this this time this last uh, this last. Uh, August, I was or September, I was really happy to go back over the uh, the Napoleon route because it's just gorgeous, right? Um, but that Val other Carlos. is it, Val Carlos? I I'm forget the right name. Now. Really forget yeah, the name. Carlos. I mean, I don't think I've I've gone in car up yeah. and over from there. I I didn't. I wouldn't consider that an easy. Oh, brutal! Walk, right, that like last, that kilometers. I'm, I'm telling you, I've never like felt like I need to lay down in the middle of the trail, <laughs> but, <laughs> but that last six is just, just like this. Right, you know? that end is it really is, tough, right? Compared to, really, really yeah, because I mean, yeah, right. you're walking up, but yeah. No, it was it was it was challenging, and I wasn't. I had not. I had no expectations for it, right. I just didn't know. I knew that it. I, I knew that I had to go this route, and so I, you know, started walking and figured I'd end up being Ross's bias at some point you know um yeah. but it was I found it to be much harder actually yeah. um than than just because of when you're tired and you know starting whenever you start day one is always tiring right so just to have that unexpected um climb up that pass was and it really wasn't that pretty like it, it just wasn't that pretty either you know you're following like the route of the telephone poles up and over the hill so it just like this it just went straight up you know you're switch backing up this hill and I, I i remember just going this is i'm ready i'm ready to see that monastery you know yeah definitely so now 2019 then you walk the whole distance you go all the way to santiago then yeah, when I ended in uh, I ended in Santiago, um, and really wished that I had finished going out to the end of the world. Um, but will but now now I'm really happy that I have it because Lily and I will get to do it. You know, oh, that's so cool. So now this is so now so now we're in 2019. Do you carry those two stones that uh, the girl picked up when you got to Cruz de Ferro? 
Yeah, I drug. Yeah, so I carried I carried those uh, I carried the two stones and dropped them off. So initially, I um, since I couldn't drop off my stones, I had met a a, a wonderful couple from uh, from the 2017. I had met a wonderful couple from Australia, and uh, and they took my stones. Um, oh. So they and they took photos of them where they put them at the base of the you know Cristofero and so they they might I've got I've got four stones they're sitting there now but um, but Let's it was nice about, please go ahead go ahead no go, oh no so it was nice to be, it was nice to be to that's just such a that's such a that's such a powerful powerful tradition of the Camino is just to carry those stones and leave them behind as your burden, you know, that you want to, to, to leave. Um, and, uh, and when choosing the route with, with Lily, um, you know, there's so many parts of the Camino, I think that, that are wonderful, but we were in the, we were started in Lyon, um, and we're walking to the end of the world. Um, and there's just so much there because then she gets the she gets the she gets to Santiago she gets the the her her Compostela she gets Cruz de Ferro she gets all the beautiful beauty of the Gaudi and Astorga and in 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 Leon um, and Galicia you know like it's just the it's so special um, so that's why that's why this time we're we're doing this that route. Okay, so let's talk about, and before we started recording, you mentioned that um, Astorga, you know, walking from Astorga is one of your favorite um, parts. Um, yeah. So, you know, so let's talk about, I guess, I want to go back and talk about that couple uh, as well that carried your first stones. But so, but let's start with now you're walking from, I'm assuming you started that stage that morning from Astorga and um, mm. Did you go straight to Cruz de Ferro or did you spend the night in Ravenna or Ponce Badon? No, you know, I, uh, what I stated in, in the last place you just mentioned. Um, yeah. So you got up in the morning yeah. and walked to Cruz de Ferro in the morning. And um, can you tell us a little bit about what that felt like? Because you didn't get to do that on that first walk. Someone else carried those two stones. Now yeah. you've got the two new stones. Yeah. Um, Describe for us what it was like to arrive at Cruz de Ferro and and placing those two stones there. I loved I loved doing it when I did it. So I I, I got up early and so that we I would capture the you know be up there for for sunrise you know because it's I don't remember exactly the, the distance but it's not that far from um, so and I I. I did run into somebody on the way up, but it was a it was really just me up there, which was special you know um when i got up there 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 at least when i arrived you know people people trickled in and trickled out but when i arrived it was just me and cruz de ferro which was 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 fun um and so i had a few minutes just to to, to sit down and yeah it was a, it choked me up it's a it's quite a it's quite a special place um, it really is because you just see all of those, you know, you're climbing up the, the burdens of others, you know, like what, a, that's, that's powerful, you know, that's just a powerful thing. Um, it really is. And, and then just to be able to, you know, strangely, I, I was carrying some, I, ironically, I was carrying somebody else's stone um, that, that I started with on this walk, and he ended up leaving in the, the middle of the Meseta. But no, actually, he, his last day was in, in, in Leon. So I was carrying his stone, and I left that as well. Oh, what did that feel like, carrying someone else's stone? I mean, it kind of felt totally normal because I somebody else had carried mine you know like <laughs> it, it, it was it was an odd it was odd that it worked out that way but um yeah no I was honored I mean like it's it's a it's a it's a special thing to be able to to to, to you know it's a special thing to do it your, yourself but also I thought it was a beautiful gesture that the 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 the, the Australian couple um, did for, for me and then to be able to pay that forward was kind of cool. I, I love that story. I, that's what I was gonna ask you is what, what did it feel like when you reached Cruz de Ferro and then recalling this couple that carried your original two, you know, what yeah. ran through your mind? Um, boy, uh, 
I don't know. You know, honestly, it, I, I, I was really, there was, I was weighted down by those two little stones, you know, because, yeah. because of just wanting so desperately to be a better version of myself for my, my girls. And so it was, I was happy to leave them, but I was really, really, it's a very humbling place. Like it's a really special spot. So like I, it was overwhelming for me. It really was. It was, a, it was, I would say more so than even walking into Santiago, you know? So, so it, it was, it was, I was right where I needed to be, where I went at that, at that moment. Yeah. So Camino Andy, how is he different? <laughs> if Matthew were on here talking to us right now, uh, how would she describe you when you come home? And um, I'm just an easier, I think I'm just an, I'm, I feel more, I, I think she would probably not say that I was an easier person to live with, although I'm certain that I am. Um, but it's, I think she just sees me at more, I'm just at peace. You know, like there's something about, um, there's just, I'm a, I'm a gentler, I'm gentler on myself. And mm -hmm. I think through the whole process, you know, like I've, I've started, I've been starting, I've been working with, with somebody and, and focused a lot on meditation. These, this last, um, this last stretch of, uh, of my life. And uh, there's just, there's a, when you, I've spent my whole life getting out of any situation. So school was really tough for me because um, I tested into a, a, a high, you know, a, a gifted class in fourth grade. Um, but I taught myself to read after college. So like it was, it was, a, I spent my whole growing up life hiding it. And um, especially through through education, like I just like I just please don't call me, please don't call me, please don't call me, because I just was unable to read, you know. And yeah. yet I was I was just expected. There was such expectations on me to be to be something other than what I was, you know. That sure I I okay, so I I had a good test score, you know. You I walked into a I walked into a a room and you put puzzles in front of me and I did well. But holy cow, that was such a tough thing to do to a kid and to teachers who at the back of the day didn't really understand dyslexia, you know. Right. So so it um so I, I think my whole life I've been able to diffuse things with words, you know, and to like don't look here, look here, you know. Um I was not true to myself and really I spent a lot of time being pretty unkind to myself and that's a that's a that's a slippery slope you know and once you can once once I was able to I mean I'm not able to but I yet but like I've really really been gentler to myself um and I, I, and I notice a huge difference. So you, so this is a long-winded way of saying, like, I think that Maggie would say that this whole Camino experience has led to this bigger journey of just being kinder to myself. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that the Camino gives you that space. I think it gives you that space to just be you. You know, like I mentioned, I, I've mentioned a couple of times, like the Camino sees my favorite me. And I use that phrase because it just it really does. Like I'm, I'm a better, I'm my, I'm, I'm who I want to be all the time when I'm there. The Camino um, sees the better me. It seems my, it sees my favorite me. It seems uh, my favorite me. I like yeah. that. And, and, um, uh, I actually, I can't, I can't take credit for it. I stole it from a, 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 my, one of my favorite folk singers, uh, uh, Chris Delmhorst. Um, but, uh, but still. Are you it, about it, the Camino? No, that she just uses that line. Oh, sees okay. me in one of her songs and I, I've, okay. I've pilfered it and, uh, and now use it for myself. Um, because it really appropriately, it really is, yeah. There you. So I asked you this morning to send me a couple of photos and you, <laughs> you sent me a couple and there's two that I want to ask you about. So, yeah, please. so there's one of you in front of the, in front of the cathedral in Santiago, um, yeah. with another person. And yeah. so what made you select that one and tell me about that moment of taking the photo there. 
Yeah, actually, it's a really interesting. Yeah, that's 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 a good question. Um, I so I walked with a the the, the man in that photo um, is uh, a pastor. Uh, he's from he's from England, and he he was really impactful in my in my communal life. And we weren't like we we kind of just touched on each other. We we were in and out. I had very little time with him, but every time we had some moments. And he, and I remember sitting, I remember sitting on the edge of his bed, just sobbing one day, um, because he was telling me the story of his daughter who has Graves disease. And yeah. just like, kind of opened it up in me, because, because people just, it's all, I was able to just explain to him how uncomfortable I've been, like really as far back as I remember and how it just wasn't my fault. And he would just look at me and just says, like, it's just not your fault. Like your body is, is, is really playing a cruel trick on you and speeding you up to really untenable, unmanageable speeds. And, and so you, you're, it's not your fault that you're at times on tilt and at times challenging to be around. And it was just like so nice to have that moment with somebody, you know, where they understood. And, you know, he, he just, he understood, you know, because he was the dad of, right? Of a kiddo who's experienced the same thing. And so that photo, so I, so like that was one moment that I had with him. And, and then I, I, I got into Santiago and I ended up walking in alone and it was really not, it wasn't that memorable for me. Like the first time that I did it right. and I didn't have the friends and I like I had left people behind and, and I just wasn't walking in with that. I just didn't have that moment that people have, you know? And, um, and so I, I shot him a message and said, Hey, where are you? And, 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 and he was, he was coming in the next day. And I said, look, will you, will you do me the honor of letting me walk in with you? I said, oh, and, and so he said, yeah, he said, absolutely. So I, I, I walked back and found him, I don't know, a kilometer or two and walked in with him. And it was such a different moment, you know? It was such a special moment. And I had that emotion that you hear about. And like, I just needed to do it with somebody who knew me or I had had a moment with and I got to experience it. Like so much of the joy of the Camino is seeing the Camino in other people's eyes, you know, having, having that, 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 sh that they're, you're, sh it's really cool to share that with somebody. And so like, for me, that's, so that photo that I, what, that I, I sent was of, of him and, and me in, in the square. Okay. Well, I had no idea. And I'm glad I asked that question because I literally have chills right now. I mean, he was, you know, that's the stories we we hear all the time about the Camino is this angel showing up. I mean, here's this man that you have no idea. He has no idea about your grave's uh, condition. And here he has a daughter. And what a what a moment that must have been to have that bonding moment, that that sharing for both of you. Yeah, it really was. I mean, like really both of us were quite choked up that day sitting on his bed. And it just yeah. was just a it was an unexpected, such a needed moment, you know? And and I, I funny, I mentioned him in, in dance podcast too, because he just, he was the one, he was the one person who just, I needed. I didn't know that I needed him, but I really needed him. And, 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 and forever he will be part of that experience for me because he he and I, I hope he knows how impactful he was because you know well that's wonderful hopefully he hears this or hears uh knows that um that moment was so special for you right we're getting close to our hour um what kind of um you know do you have some apprehensions or some worries about like you've walked by yourself yeah. And now you're taking your one of your young daughters, and she's still, you know, eighth grade. Um, do you have any apprehensions or uh, worries about how it's going to be different than walking by yourself? I don't, because honestly, it's it's about her. 
this one's about her. It's about us. And I have, I, I've, I have set up because again, we are in a pandemic. Um, I have set up most of our stops and also because she has a, she, we have to hit our marks, you know, but the marks are short. I've kept the, I've kept the, 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 the time short. So we just have nothing but time to just let her get whatever she's going to get out of this experience. The only, the only rule that I have, and she's done it, I, I said, look, you need, I need for you to, to have your shoes, have the right pair of shoes. And I also need, because it's a long way for us to go, for you to know that you can do this. So I said, look, I need for, for say, like, I would like for you to spend seven days walking every day for seven miles the first six days and then 11 the the last day um and she did it she 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 did it and uh and i walked with her some days and some days she took barley the dog and uh and she she got to experience just day in and day out walking because i don't think people really realize how difficult that actually is yes it's the back to back right it's the long distance back to back that um, it's is. hard to recreate. So what a what a clever training thing you did with her. That's awesome. Well, let's That's get her up. in so we can say hi to her. And um, I know you're going to have um, let Maggie know that we're ready for her. And I have not met Lily yet. I just know about her. Um, but we thought it would be really fun to have Lily pop in and say hi. And then uh, when they're here in Robin Hall, um, we hope to do an interview with all three of us. And I don't know. Yeah, no. Book live or something. We'll have to see how the timing works out. What time you get here? And uh, are, are you're going to just your plan is to spend the night in Robin Hall, and then the next day get to cruise to Barrow. Is that? Yeah. Okay. Cool. Yeah, I think I. I honestly, I I don't have my my itinerary um, uh, in front of me, but um, but yeah, the, I think that's probably right. Because uh, how far is how far is cruise to Faro, um from where you are? It's about eight kilometers. And then if you get the Ponce Bazal. Oh, yeah. So then, uh, then yeah, we'll be getting up and, and doing that. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's nice to stay here and then and then walk up. Ponce Bazal, it's only about two mile or two kilometers. Um, but yeah, so more places to stay here, especially. So you guys start out in beginning of March. Is that right? Uh, March 18th, I think, is when we, when we start. And um, March 17th, maybe. Uh, and then... Spanish? No, neither one of us speaks Spanish. <laughs> Here she is. Hey, Lily. I'm Lee. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too. Thanks for coming on and uh, talking to us about the Camino. So uh, you leave on what? We're already almost to February, the last day of January, and you're going to be walking pretty soon. So how do you feel about all of this? Like what's going on in your mind right now about the idea of walking the Camino? I'm a little nervous, but it's really Yeah, I think that's pretty normal to feel nervous. I know I have felt nervous. I've walked twice and I felt nervous both times. What kinds of things are you nervous about? Like what's running through your mind? Well, I'm gonna be walking a lot and I don't walk like, I mean, I walked a little bit this summer, but it was kind of, I was sore for sure. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, I feel a little weird and I'm gonna miss a lot of school. So we'll see about it. Yeah, how do you, are you going to have to do homework and things while you're walking or are your teachers letting you have the whole time off? No, I have to do homework as well. Okay, all right. So how do your friends feel about this? What do you, because I'm, I'm guessing many of them don't even know what the Camino is or have you No, they, I mean, I told one of their moms about it and they were very interested about that. So that was a big, but they said that they're happy for me, but they're going to miss me a lot because I'm going to be gone for a while. Yeah, yeah. And what do, do they have any idea of what you're getting ready to do? Like how many kilometers a day you're going to walk? And I mean, I told them, but I don't think they really know. <laughs> <laughs> it is kind of gross. Until, you, until you're actually out there walking for mile after mile after mile after mile, I get it. It's, it's tough to comprehend. Yeah. <laughs> Your dad had sent me an email uh, when he first told me about your upcoming walk, and he, he mentioned that he had asked, or the two of you had had a discussion about what you should pack. And I think maybe his answer probably 
I don't know, did you find his answer at that time helpful? Because I think he kind of said, oh, you'll pack whatever it is you need or tell me about that moment. It, it was uh, vague. It was vague. It was vague. <laughs> and how did you feel about that? I mean, I didn't know it was, I don't know what I, my personal belongings I'm supposed to bring and versus like walking clothes and shoes and bedding and things like that. I mean, we got stuff for last well, when we were coming, but we're going to have to get new things. Right, you've grown a little in the last two years. So all <laughs> the stuff purchased for the last time is, uh, is well, it'll maybe fit Hana. Um, yeah. so, but, Did um, you have your backpack picked out yet that you're bringing? Is that big enough? Yep. The yeah. small one? Yeah, no, yeah, you, you mama's pack. The green pack. Mm -hmm. Since it's not the one we were talking about. So... So what's, what's something that you're thinking you want to bring that's a personal item that you're a little worried about? Like, you don't know if you should bring it or not, or if you're going to have enough room. Well, I don't, because there's, there's like wool and like specific clothing you're supposed to wear, but what kind of clothes am I supposed to bring on my own? Because I don't really have wool clothing every year. That you wear? Well, like comfortable clothes, like, li like just around in Alberta. I don't know. Oh, I like at nighttime and stuff. Yeah, yeah. That's a really hard decision. What I did is I packed um, basically three sets of everything or at least two sets. So um, this last time I tried to pack a little bit less. So I had two sets of walking clothes and then something that I would wear in the evening that was like a little more comfortable, um, which is always tough because I want to bring something super cute to wear or <laughs> whatever. But um, I can assure you that everybody's pretty much in hiking clothes. All the pilgrims are going to be walking with, you know, our hair looks like a disaster most of the day and uh, we're all in hiking stuff. So after a couple of days, it, it doesn't seem to matter really what, what extra stuff you brought. Um, probably the most important thing is to have a lighter backpack than anything because it's a lot to carry it every day. I don't know if you guys are going to transport some stuff or not, Andy, have you decided or are you carrying it? It, it, it really depends on whether or not it depends on how much stuff she's going to need to bring for her studies, right? Yeah. And so we're gonna we we're gonna schedule some time, talk to each one of the teachers, and see if we can get you know like we can print things out and not have to carry books. But if if do I really want to lug a computer on my back? Not really. So potentially we'll ship something forward yeah. if her needs are there you know but I also really really hope that we can come up with an arrangement that we can keep her her homework to an hour you know like an hour a day um <laughs> even that seems like a lot right Lily <laughs> uh yeah no I see I don't know if that's enough an hour but I don't know it depends on what I do when I first get to after walking but you know then you'll have we'll have time because I think we're we're scheduling I mean I think I think the longest mileage we're going to be doing is, I don't know, maybe fourteen. You know, so there, there. So we'll have, we'll, we'll have a lot of time. Um, I just don't want it to. Look, the whole issue is. I mean, the whole thing is stress relief, right? And if she's thinking about homework the whole time or what she's missing, she's not. I. I she's. She may not get what she wants out of it. Um, yeah. So, hopefully. Yeah. yeah, no chance of the teachers holding off on the homework, huh? That's an absolute, it has to happen. Yeah, because I'm missing two weeks of just school, so. Um, but we planned it, we planned it right, so it's the last week of a, of a quarter and the first week of a quarter, so okay. I hope it'll be a lighter time. And, I can... and then we have, then we have spring break in the middle, right? So, um, oh, good. so, so, Fingers crossed, right? That it, it, we, her, she won't actually have that much work. Yeah, yeah. I feel for you because Lily, because my daughter always had a lot of homework anytime it seemed like we went on vacations or, or did anything. So I, I know it, that can be kind of a hard thought. When you think about doing this Camino with your dad, I'm getting ready to walk with my dad actually um, in July. And um, I wonder like, what are you most looking forward to about this walk, about doing a Camino? Um, well, other than worrying about homework, which I don't want to do, I'm just excited to kind of be out. I mean, right outside here is, it's pretty calm and quiet, but I mean, there's going to be different people from everywhere and you're just kind of walking in the middle of nowhere. So it should yeah. be calm. Have you been to Spain before? Once. 
Yeah, we went to Spain. Southern. Okay. All right. Great. And I've heard on like the Camino and some fun and everything. And he always comes back a little bit less stressed. But then it goes Only back. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so tell me about Camino Dad. When Camino Dad first comes home from a Camino, he's a lot less stressed. But after a little while, he goes back to being pretty stressed. Yeah, I think we all do that. We all do that. Are you looking forward to that for yourself personally? Would you describe yourself as as having anxiousness, or like how do you think you might change? What would you like to see transform about you? Well, I'm hoping that I'll be healthier and that. I'll just be a little bit more calm and yeah, a little bit more like that instead of always anxious about things. Yeah. Do you want them to say Camino Lily? That there's a Camino <laughs> Lily back home that's a little different. <laughs> <laughs> well, I can't wait to meet you both in person. You'll be here soon in Ravenal. And uh, I, I'm really looking forward to watching this journey unfold as you guys walk. I think this is just super exciting and I, I just really I'm, I'm so excited for you I mean I, having walked I know all the great things that are about to happen for you and I can't wait to hear um, all the cool people you meet and the experiences that you individually get to have you know you'll be going to Cruz de Ferro which you know your you know your dad carried stones for you and your sister have you selected any stones that you're going to be carrying yet no I haven't I didn't know okay. we were walking that way <laughs> you did. Uh -oh, did oh, I, I let secret, and I'm sorry. No, 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 no. no I, was, I just knew we were walking to like the, the water. I didn't know we were walking to the stones. Yep. It'll be, I don't know how many days in, but a few. Yeah. Well, you, need find, you need to find a stone. Mm. Well, Lily, in my opinion, you're going to be walking the most, with the most beautiful part of the Francis. So, um, going to be I, I think a really cool experience well i can't wait to meet you both and um I, i'm really looking forward to all that thank you for taking time out of your day today to talk here at the camino cafe and i'm gonna end the interview here but if you guys would just stay on so we can say goodbye i appreciate it and i hope all of you that have had this chance to hear this podcast or if you've watched us on youtube that uh, you're as excited for this father and daughter walk and uh, for each of them for their own individual journeys as they walk together as well. So uh, anyway, we'll be coming back with more shows from them. And in the meantime, uh, check out our Facebook page, also on Instagram. And uh, thank you for being supporters of this show and this project that I'm doing where we're just recording the Camino stories of pilgrims. And I, I hope that you get to walk through Robin all uh, before Talon and I get to meet you as well. So thanks everyone. I'm Camino. Mm -hmm.